Okay, so welcome back to part two of the episode in which Dr. Umar Johnson attempts to savagely address Kevin Samuels and other YouTubians that he claims are running around the internet disrespecting and making black women feel bad. Let's get it. This is that fatherlessness. This is that fatherless little girl inside of you that cries out for validation by any means necessary. This is the abused little girl inside of you whose father wasn't there to pour love and pour strength and pour abundance into your soul. And now you're running around looking for validation and you will let the most unqualified and uncertified. You will let the most unqualified and uncertified. You will let the most unqualified and uncertified YouTube and beta, beta male tear you apart in front of your peers. Well, the good doctor was listing some of the things that these women did not receive. Maybe he should have included items such as discipline, authority, leadership, good dose of reality, you know, perhaps a reality check. Maybe he should have added some of those things to the list too. But anyway, interestingly enough, these are some of the things that these young women experience when they go on to a show like the Kevin Samuels show. It's interesting the way he structured that. It's almost as if it's designed to expose them to this message and expose them to these things that they didn't receive because they did not have a father in the home. But anyway, let's keep it pushing. Because you just hoping that this one time you will get publicly validated and you think that if you get publicly validated, if you think that you are get publicly validated, you might feel better about yourself. And I'm here to tell you that the mind loves to play tricks on you. Yes, yes, I agree wholeheartedly. The doctor is correct. The mind does love to play tricks on you. Your mind loves to play tricks on you. That's right. Your mind wants you to think that if you can get one of these YouTube and beta males to validate you publicly, your self-esteem will go up, but it won't. These are the games the unconscious plays on your mind, black woman. These are the games that your unconscious plays on your mind, black woman. Don't let your mind play games on you. He makes a great point about self-esteem. It would be even a greater point if it was all about self-esteem. But in truth, a lot of this is about ego. Perhaps it's not so much about self-esteem as it is about egos being stroked. And that's what we had a lot of going on in modern society. Ego stroking. When someone does something that doesn't fit that narrative, maybe introduced a bit of accountability and a reality check, it can look very, very strange. Don't let that little girl inside of you who was victimized as a child. Don't let that little girl inside of you that was victimized by your first husband. Don't let that little girl inside of you that was sexually assaulted or physically assaulted by her mother's boyfriend. Don't let the pain of that little girl. Don't let the pain of your inner child, black woman. Don't let the inner child run your life. Again, great advice. Don't let the inner child run your life. But notice the trend. Victim, 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 victim. It's all about victimhood. Where there's another type of victimhood that is occurring. And that is a lack of accountability. When people are allowed to live in a world that lacks accountability, personal responsibility, they are victimized yet again. See, black woman, I want you to understand something. When you read for sister's only book, you want to learn about that little girl that every black woman got living inside of her. And that little girl is scarred and hurt. All of what you've been through as a little girl, all the sexual molestations you've been through as a little girl, the sexual abuse and exploitations you've been through as a little girl, the relationships you've been in that did not turn out right. That little girl in you is trying to heal all of these negative situations that he just talked about truly do exist. It's unfortunate, but they do exist. Why don't we address that? Let's talk about it. Why save it for a book? You have a platform. Let's talk about it. But she doesn't know how to heal, so she's motivating you to get involved 
in dysfunctional relationships and dysfunctional situations to get your unmet needs met. That's right. Again, folks, what you are hearing right now are facts. Unfortunately, they are a bit out of context. These situations exist. There is truth to what he is saying. It's just uh, out of context. Let's keep pushing. When you find yourself going on these YouTube platforms to let uncredentialed, uncertified people, when you go on these YouTube platforms to let uncredentialed strangers evaluate you, that's the little girl in you. That's the little girl in you crying out for validation. And I'm telling you, sister, if your father is still alive, if your father figure is still alive, if your uncle or grandfather is still alive, if you have a pastor who ain't trying to get in your panties, if you have a pastor who ain't trying to get in your panties, you can have a conversation with a man. This, this right here is some excellent advice. Excellent advice. Have you noticed when he talked about the pastor, have you ever noticed how we hear that so often about the pastor trying to get into girls' panties. Well, there's a reason for that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off on a tangent here for a split second, but that pastor is a leader in the community. In the black community, it's often the pastor who's a leader in the black community. The role that Dr. Umar Johnson has assumed is similar to that of a pastor. In fact, it's almost exactly the same without the religious connotations. He's essentially usurped. The position of a pastor. But something that we should all think about, something that can be pretty scary, is that you don't want men in certain positions dealing with women unsupervised, in mass, unsupervised. In some situations, it's better for women to deal with women because men are men. And those temptations are there. I don't care who you think you are. I don't think, don't care who, how untemptable you think you are. I don't care how much self-control you think you have, but a lot of situations dealing with leaders in the community who are men, dealing with women unsupervised should be avoided. Anyway, let's keep it pushing. Who doesn't have a sexual interest in you? You can have a conversation with a man who doesn't have a sexual interest in you to help get those unmet needs. See, every woman in the world, but we're talking about our queens. Every woman in the world, but we're talking about our queens. Every woman in the world needs a man who loves her without any interests of sexual intercourse. Yes, they're called fathers uncles and cousins, family members. This goes on. Let's keep pushing. Listen to me well, black woman. In order for you to be healthy, you have to have a man you can go to and get emotional healing and support. And that man is so secure in his manhood and so in control of his hormones and his root chakra. See, black men, we got to get our root chakras under control. Okay, brother, before we run off down the chakra rabbit hole, start talking about root chakras and how much control you have, it should probably begin with protocol. Women, this is for the women. Stop believing you can run to these men for that emotional support you're looking for, and he has absolutely zero sexual interest in you. It just doesn't work that way. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it just doesn't work that way. It's just like the friend zone. I guarantee you that 90%, probably higher, 95, 99% of the men that you have in your friend zone, your friend zone, if you called them up, asked them to come over and give you the goodies, <laughs> you would get got. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it pushing. The black man has to get his root chakra. Black men, the reason why some of us are so hypersexual is our root chakra is out of control. We have to get our root chakras under control if we really want to serve the black sisterhood. I'm going to say it again. We got to get our root chakras under control so that we can be of better use to our women. Because every black woman needs a man 
that she can depend on for emotional support that doesn't lead to sexual abuse. Gentlemen, there's some value to that advice, getting your root chakra under control. But fellas, men realize controlling your root chakra, it's not about the women, it's about you. You need to get that under control for your own sake and your own benefit. And ladies, you need to avoid those situations in which a man's control of his root chakra is even a factor. Protocol, ladies and gentlemen, protocol, the best way to avoid temptation is to avoid the situation. Let's keep it pushing. And I'm using sexual abuse in the general sense, not having sexually raped or anything, but having sex with a woman who really don't need sex can be a form of sex abuse. Bruh. Bruh. Come on, bruh. You know, I think, I, I, I think, I think that he thinks that, that, that he, he's trying, trying to go somewhere with that. We're going to keep it pushing. Having sex with a woman who really don't need sex, who's looking for love, that can be considered a form of sexual abuse, brothers and sisters. And so black men have to get our root chakras under control so when sisters come to us, we can say to ourselves, not to her, this is a beautiful sister, but she don't need me for that. She don't need me for that. She need me to be a man right now. She needs me to be a non-sexual man. She needs masculine energy that does not have any sexual agenda tied to it. This is deep, 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 deep. What he's talking about is non-sexual masculine energy. Non-sexual masculine energy. Ladies, trust me, if this man is not a man, with whom sexual interaction would be frowned upon, i.e. family member, uncle, father, brother, people that you're not supposed to be having sex with anyway. If it's not one of these men, there is some sexual energy to be had as well. A man carries all of that energy inside of him. Again, protocol, stop trying to be friends with men to get their non-sexual energy. Get a husband. Get it from your father. Get it from a family member. Quit playing with men. And men, quit acting like you're so in control of your urges that you need to be surrounded by women who need non-sexual energy before you find yourself putting one of them in the huckabuck. Before you find yourself using your authority, your status, your position, to advance a sexual agenda. None of us men are perfect. The best thing you can do is use protocol. Avoid the situation. Let's keep it pushing. Women often need masculine love and emotion that doesn't have any physical intimacy tied to it. And I'm gonna say this to all the black men listening. I'm gonna say this to all the black men listening. I'm going to say this to all the black men listening. Negro, just say it, please. Until you are strong enough to love a woman without sticking your Shango stick. Until you can say, Dr. Umar, I know some women who are beautiful and got a lot going for them. But because I know I don't really mean them no good or because I know they really looking for a husband right now and not just a friend or because I know I have enough women on my rotation as it is because I know I have enough queens in my queendom. Another great example that is missing some components. Everything that he just said sounds really great. But what I would add to that is. If you know these things and you know that you would love to experience this sister, perhaps. Maybe, just perhaps, you would avoid intimate contact with that female. Too many of our black leaders are placing themselves in a position where they know they would love to have sex with this woman, becoming a confidant to that woman without understanding that you are human, bruh. You're a human being. Let's keep pushing.
Although I would love to experience this sister. I'm going to be a real alpha male today. I'm going to be a real alpha male today and I am not going to let that sister walk into a trap. <laughs> ah, bruh, bruh, come on, bruh. Where she's looking for masculine validation but ends up getting taken advantage of by another male. I'm going to let her know, sister, I'm not going to sleep with you. You're beautiful, you're drop dead gorgeous, but I know you're looking for more. And because I know you're looking for more, I'm never going to touch you. We are never going to go there. I'm going to be the man you can come to when you need to have a conversation about other men. I'm going to be the man you can come to and get a hug, a real tight hug, and it not lead to nothing else. Black men, part of being masculine is being able to turn that root chakra down, turn down that root chakra energy and just be a brother to a sister in order to be an alpha male in my definition. Part of being an alpha male. Part of being an alpha male is being emotionally available to black women in need of positive masculinity without it leading to a sexual escapade. I think what he means to say is being emotionally intelligent. Emotional intelligence and emotional availability are two different things, but we're going to keep on pushing. Part of being an alpha male in my definition, in my definition, part of being an alpha male in my definition is being emotionally available to a woman without allowing the relationship to descend into an empty sexual escapade. That's where we got to get black men. America has made us too hypersexual. America has made us too hypersexual. America has made us as black men, all men, but I'm talking to my brothers. America has made us hypersexual. Let's straighten this out. Let's not blame it on America. How about biology? Men are men and they've always been hypersexual. Hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, it's always been an issue in society. And the mark of a high value man has always been the ability to control that. Let's keep it pushing. And ever since slavery, 400 years, the black man has been trained to sexually objectify the black woman. What? Slavery? Come on, man. You know what? 50 years from now, there's still going to be brothers like this running around blaming everything on slavery. Anyway, let's keep pushing. For 400 years, the black man has been trained by the slave master to sexually objectify the black woman's body and the black woman herself. You can take a baby boy of any race, raise him in seclusion, and when he hits puberty, you bring some girls around him. He's going to objectify them. He's going to look at them and know what he wants. Come on, brother. Come on. You can do better than this. Let's keep going. For some of us, the black woman is nothing more than an object of sexual satisfaction. For many of us, the black woman is nothing more than an object of sexual satisfaction. That comes from the slave empire. What we're dealing with, bro, is a biological imperative. It's bigger than slavery. It's bigger than that, brother. You're not going to address it by blaming it on the white man. Come on, let's keep pushing. That is part of post-traumatic slavery disease. If you are a black man and the main worth of a woman to you is her sexual abilities, then you suffer from post-traumatic slavery disease. So if you're just a hypersexual horny dude, then you're suffering from slave disease disorder or something, even though you've never been a slave, but somehow you were traumatized, maybe, I don't know, genetic, maybe Akashic record. I don't, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. We're going to keep pushing. Now, don't get me wrong. Black women are gorgeous. I love five, five thick in the thighs. 
I love a curvy, conscious, nappy headed, intelligent, can throw down in the kitchen black woman. Oh, yes, I love a beautiful black woman. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I am a man with the urges and instincts of any other African man. <laughs> I bet you do. Probably would just love to see a group of five, five, thick in the thighs, women in a circle, a sister circle. <laughs> Keep pushing. But at the same time, the, 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 the God in me, the deity in me, the divine in me dictates that I control that root chakra and control those natural urges towards reproduction when I see a sister who needs more than that. All right, YouTube family. Thanks for stopping in and spending some time with your main man, Jerome Jackson. Be sure to like, comment, and share this content. And if you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe. We'll see y'all on the next video. Take care, family. Peace.